Hello and welcome! Woohoo! I'm hopefully live now. Um, so first up, I'm just going to welcome the replay visitors because I know there'll be some of you. So welcome. This is our workshop live number one. Um, I haven't done a, a one of these for a while, but we used to do these all the time and they were super popular and I'm excited to be back teaching here. So this is workshop getting our power back under our feet and working proactively with ascensional surge. That's our topic for today. So as this goes live, just let me know in the comments that you can hear me or see me so I know that it's actually working. It's been a long time since I've used all this technology on Facebook and uh, the streaming services and stuff. So I just wanna make sure that it's all here and working. Okay, perfect. <sighs> so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to launch right into it because there's nothing worse on replay than waiting and waiting. That kind of sucks. Okay, so let us get started here as you're jumping on. Say hello. Uh, if you're on replay, say hello. <laughs> let me know. Um, I will respond to questions and comments after in the comments below. So if you're on replay, don't feel like you can't ask a question go for it and I will take some time later this afternoon to go through it all and answer any questions that come up. Okay, welcome to people who are popping on. Woohoo, Lou's here. Yay, Lou. So nice to see you. Okay, getting our power back under our feet and working proactively with Ascensional Surge. Woohoo. Sarah. So good. I've got comments on my phone. I've got comments on the streaming service. It's, it's all pretty crazy. But it's so good to see you all again. Okay, so if you've been looking at the timeline, you've seen that I'm starting to post again a little bit about where we're at ascensionally. Um, if people are interested, maybe we can do a little bit more. I could probably do some... Uh, I don't like the term forecast, but I could give you a bit of a rundown on where we're at ascensionally, probably in another post or live. But we all know that we're in an ascensional surge right now, and we've been feeling it obviously for the last couple of years. It's um, ascensional surge is all about we're always in ascension, right? We're always inching slowly moving forwards, but right now we're in surge, a rapid period of reshaping and change. And of course, we've been seeing it in the decade of disruption <laughs> that we're experiencing right now. And it's moving from external to internal to external to internal. What do I mean by that? We're seeing it mirrored in the world around us. And now actually, we're in a period where it's really internal for a lot of people. There's a lot of integration needing to happen. There's a lot of uh, falling apart of old ways and new ways emerging in our personal lives and in our belief systems, in our habits, in our patterning. Um, and so we're going to continue to see those bouncing from the external to the internal, right? Um, and those are just things that we need to be aware of. And this will go, what we're talking about today will work wh whichever direction we're in, right? Um, but I'm going to lens it around what's needed right now, okay? Okay, so as we're getting started here, I want you to consider taking, just take a moment here and just consider out of your head and just drop down into your body for a second, and some of you may not have been hanging out in your body much at all lately. It might be feeling uncomfortable. There may be pain or discomfort or tension or emotions that you're not ready to deal with. It's okay. I'm going to ask you to just gently, gently tiptoe in. And if you're in that position, find a place in your body that feels better than some of the other places, right? You don't have to go right to the heart of <coughs> discomfort here but you want to get into your body. So find a place in your body and just take a breath there and just notice it. And take a moment to just, if you feel up to this, scanning a little bit wider in your body, maybe what's moving in your chest, in your abdomen. What are you noticing in your shoulders, jaw, neck, eyes? And just take a moment to check in with yourself. And why are we doing this? This is the reality of your current state. It doesn't need to have a big story attached to it. We don't need to make a lot of meaning to it. 
for a check-in like right now no we just need to know what are we actually uh, what is reality for us in this moving moment right in our present moment and I want you to take note of that now because we're going to use that later so just notice what it is notice how your body feels if you are energy sensitive and you or you've worked with me before and you know how to do a body scan take a moment to notice how you feel your energy moving is your energy sluggish and slow are you or is it zipping around is it moving fluidly down one side of your body but not the other are there areas where it's flowing and then hitting congestion or block or stuckness and not moving fluidly around your whole system are you noticing a temperature or different temperatures in different parts of your body? Does, uh, as I'm sitting here talking to you, asking you to tune in, and for some people that may feel like imagining, it's 100% okay. <laughs> if you're listening to me talking and colors come to mind, notice what colors are there. And now move your attention just gently not in a deep dive we're going to ferret out every single emotion but notice what's the first accessible emotion that you're feeling and maybe there's two maybe even three right that are right on the surface i'm not asking you to dive deep in the middle of a facebook live but notice what is actually present in the resonating field of your body right now without judgment only with curiosity okay there's not a place for judgment at all Okay, if you want to add in the comments any of what you noticed in your check-in, um, please do. It helps to just solidify it for you. <coughs> We're going to use that check-in a little bit later. So taking a moment to notice, huh, this is where I'm actually at right now. Not where I want to be, not where I was an hour ago, but where I am right now. <coughs> okay. Okay, so... Ascensional surge. Now that you've had a check in and you know where you are and you know that we're in ascensional surge, why does it matter that we proactively work with it? Let's just start there. Why? Why? We've got lots going on. Why should we be doing this? The bottom line is no one gets to opt out of evolution and no one gets to opt out of ascensional growth so we have a couple choices we can work with it proactively or we can kind of get dragged along by it so it kind of like sometimes like a tsunami going over the top of us sometimes just feeling completely dragged and overwhelmed right now we're not always going to get it perfect ascension there is no perfect right ascension is by its very nature asking us to reform and reshape right and for our psyches for the ego <coughs> that wants certainty that is trying to keep sameness and status quo in place then that's a scary unhappy thought for the ego right reshaping is the name of the game and so we have to find some ways to adapt and help our psyches <laughs> learn to adapt to moving into these phases in a different way. And a lot of what I'm going to talk about today will help with that, <coughs> as well as your energy. Um, but it's a big period, and sometimes you'll feel like you've got your power under your feet and you're rocking it. You're like, oh yeah, I got it. And you can, from that space, and I'm going to take you through how to do that today, by the way. We're going to do that process. But from that space, when you feel like your power is under your feet, you can experience the ascensional surge with expansion, with possibility, with a perception of openness, of fluidness, of trust, of faith, right? And those things sound like, well, I don't always have them, I can't always access them. Absolutely, because your power is probably not under your feet. And we move backwards and forwards in ascension rapidly between those two states, okay? So please don't feel like you should be there all the time. That would be really hard to do, but we can come back to it over and over and over again, and I will show you how today, okay? So, <clears throat> If, if our power is under our feet and we see ascensional surge in 
guess what some people would consider a more optimistic viewpoint, right? Then what we're actually doing is we are in a slightly shifted dimensional reality. <clears throat> and I'm not going to talk a lot. <clears throat> it's been a while since I've done this. My voice is going already. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to talk a lot about dimensional shift, but <clears throat> you are actually, when your power is under your feet, <clears throat> got it, <clears throat> in a slightly shifted dimensional space, right? Now we can continue to shift more and more and more. And the more we cultivate new relationship with ourselves, new relationship with energy, the more we keep our power under our feet, the more we stay um living and experiencing ascension from a different dimensional space right and our goal would be 5d and above right <clears throat> and that is really a magical space to experience it from then you start to have escalations of gifts and skill sets <laughs> thank you yes hot tea hmm. I have, I do have hot tea. I will keep that in mind. So embarrassing. My family keeps bringing me my drink in this cup and it's um, just embarrassing, but <laughs> they do. Okay. So when we're in us in like a 5D or above position, then we can really work proactively with ascensional surge. And how, and why, what, what happens then? Then we start to see... Uh, we have whole new worlds of perception open to us, new opportunities, the evolution of new gifts, um, especially metaphysical ones. If you are a transformational facilitator, then you're going to notice your mastery of your craft getting exponentially deeper. And many are noticing that they are channeling new modality, new paradigm modality onto the planet. Now, all of this happens when we have our power back under our feet and we're proactively working with the surging energy. Because the surging energy is not a bad thing if we're in a good space. If we're not in good space, then it feels like we're dragged and drowning, right? But managing our ascension, especially for a transformational facilitator, is critical, right? It's not actually optional if you plan to hold this position on the planet, if this is how you want to serve. Now, a transformational facilitator, what the hell is that? A coach, a healer a facilitator, a practitioner, right? From therapist through to Reiki healer, all sort of the same. Teachers um, who are teaching and supporting inspiration shift and perception shift, all of that. Coaches, obviously, right? And I would like to say also people who may not be doing it professionally, right? Who are working to hold different frequencies on the planet, grid working, our light workers, our mothers, <laughs> mothers are facilitating transformation on the planet. They're some of the biggest change agents. They're raising the next generation, of course, right? So transformational facilitator is kind of broad, right? <laughs> but if you are hoping or you know your calling is to be a facilitator of transformation at this time on the planet, then managing our ascension um, proactively, consciously with intention is critical, right? We are frontline workers and we need to be on the front edge of, our, of that shift, of that change. We can't really help people if we're drowning, right? We need to get up and into a place. And for some of you, you've felt that. You've had to take sabbatical changes. You've had to step back for a bit until you're back in a position where you can serve, right? But we're desperately needed. And so it's actually not optional right now, okay? And the other thing that we need to know at this period with ascensional surge, and this is for everyone, but especially transformational facilitators, our levels of mastery, right, during this period are about our energy. And energy management is not optional, okay? Now, we could keep collecting certifications. We all do, you know, <clears throat> like many of you. I've got a cupboard full of myself, right? I'm not saying you don't need to do that, but mastery, what happens when you're in the presence of a master healer, right? It's their energy that you're feeling, right? And energy management 
<coughs> of all types, not just for being more potent, but for managing our flows of renewal, for managing our own sustainability. You may be noticing your clients are bringing bigger stuff to you. Of course they are. Surge is clearing a lot of stuff in everyone's fields, right? Management of our energy is not an optional piece here. Okay, so now that I've given you the why, let's get into how to do it. How? <laughs> okay, welcome to everyone who's coming on. It's really lovely to see you all here. Hey. Okay, so how can we work with Ascension proactively? Okay, there's, there's a lot of ways, right? But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to outline some that we can work with. And the first is two of your biggest needle movers in ascensional surge is your energetic system, which is undergoing the changes first, right? It's happening there first. <laughs> and then secondly, your nervous system, okay? Your nervous system. And so, and if you saw the short live I did yesterday, it's on the timeline, I talked about the interface and the connection between your nervous system and your magic you can go check that out. Um, but these two are our very, the first places. And so let's work at the root, at the base. And those are your needle movers. <clears throat> and so deciding first and foremost, what does your energy need right now? And this is gonna change. So if we go back to the check-in right now, and you go, oh yeah, I remember my check-in, just tune in again, has it shifted, is it the same? right? We always need to work with present moment. That's so a topic for another life, right? But that's power position. That's the zero still point, present moment. So what is present moment now for you? And have a think about, if you've seen the live yesterday, it's going to make more sense. Do you need to stir your energy, bring it up? Do you need more aliveness, more life, more vibrancy? Or are you, whoa, totally overwhelmed and floating around up here and really hyper do you need to soothe or settle the energy and if it's so high you may need to discharge or release energy and so knowing which direction to move the energy which is also tied to your nervous system is critical and you may need to do this a couple times a day for some of you probably most of you who are here with me today right now you'll know hello to everyone ah oh, so good to see old faces here um you will know that expansion and contraction in our energetic fields is natural breathing cycles ascensional surge is the same by the way all energetic systems cycle in breath out breath expansion contraction right so you may notice your energy shifting even across the day right does your and now i'm asking you to consider your nervous system state in that do you need to stir energy raise it do you need to settle energy soothe it or do you need to discharge discharge is when you're just so far out of tolerance zone that you need something a little more right you need to get some of it out of your body okay so that's the first one we really need to check in and decide what does our energy need to do to support our nervous system. And sometimes for some people, they can work with their energy system first. And some people, your nervous system is the easiest place because your nervous system is probably not very subtle right now for you. No one's nervous systems are totally, unless you're well within your window of tolerance. But if you're in your window of tolerance right now, then you already have nervous system regulation and that means you have skill set in that area no one on the planet right now um, would have a really good regulated nervous system without having skill set in nervous system work so if you're feeling dysregulated that would be okay right we're moving in and out of those phases all the time we want to be moving firmly back into regulated nervous system state as much as possible we do not want to be in fight or flight. We don't want to be in collapse. Now, ascensional surge is reshaping and moving through our energetic fields a lot. In fact, I'll take you through process later and you'll feel ascensional surge in your cells, right? And so it's there and it's shaping and moving us and our nervous system is going to respond to that. 
our nervous system is already responding to the collective that exists outside of us. And I know that's been a wild ride for many in the last couple of years, right? But so you're probably familiar with your nervous system. You might like you may never have been before and how it will invoke physical reaction and energetic reaction in your bodies, right? So these are things that we really want to tap into. Now for the weavers on the call right now, then you will know how to move and work with energy. And you probably know that the weave regulates your nervous system, right? But I want you to also start thinking about stirring the energy versus settling the energy versus releasing the energy, right? Now, most of you should, as weavers, have been intuitively actually knowing what you need to do in the weave because it will be there built into the very foundations, right? With our check-in, what's our first fuel source? What's already within me and what do I need? And moving from body wisdom, right? I'm gonna talk about this for the non-weavers in two seconds, I promise. Okay, and so you're probably choosing body movements and weaving vocabs that are what, you're, what you need for your energetic system and your nervous system, right? And in your music choice, right? Music choice is a really conscious way to notice if you're intuitively choosing a song as probably giving you a hint as to what your nervous system is asking for. For the non-weavers, by the way, you can do exactly the same on your Spotify playlist. Go notice what music you is lifting or lighting up your energy right now. And it may be soothing energy and it may not be, right? A lot of people are very fixed on soothing energy and there is just as much, in fact, sometimes what we desperately need is to rise out of a collapsed state through our ventral vagal system. I'm not gonna get into nervous system today. Stay out of that today, right? But there's a lot here. Um, up through things like joy, creativity, play, right? And so our music choice may be moving us in that direction. And if it's not music, maybe it's the act you're choosing to do, right? Maybe you need to get up and move around and move your body, right? So, which leads me really to our next piece in Ascensional Surge, the energy moving through our body is fast all the time, well, most of the time, like it's elevated. And we actually have now a new baseline. Now, we're not at the holy grail that people are saying we're moving to, right? But we are not where we were in 2018 or 2019. Think about that. You may feel that. Already in Ascensional Surge, the collective and the planet have a new baseline. And with that, a new level of movement as well. And you want to reset and recalibrate to that. If you're a weaver, just freaking weave and that, <laughs> that will get you there, right? If you're not a weaver, one of the most powerful things you can do is this too. Flow and movement. You want movement all the time. I'm going to talk a lot about this. So find some sort of movement that feels good to you. From Tai Chi to bushwalking to bike riding, it doesn't matter. Movement will, will really help, right? Create more flow state. And you really want flow state right now. Ascension in our reshaping process, we are shedding what does not serve. It cannot come with us, peeps. It's got to go somewhere. And more movement that we add allows us to move that through with way more grace and ease. And the other one, if you're not a weaver, or if you are a weaver, you could do this as well, is be out more in nature, right? Which, which is what I want to talk about next, is how to work more proactively with Ascensional Surge, is adopt approach uh, wherever you can of biomimicry, right? What the hell is biomimicry? It's where we look to nature to see how it's already solved the problems we're experiencing. The earth is in ascension too. She's doing it more gracefully, right? She's in ascension too, okay? So we look to nature, we use these lenses of biomimicry, which again, if there's interest, I, I could talk more about, right? But 
nature, ecosystems are always evolving and adapting and staying in balance and creating internal sustainability in their ecosystem to adapt to whatever happens, floods, bushfires, um, snowstorms, I don't have them here, right? But I'm sure some of you do. All of those things, the earth is adapting and staying in movement and flow right and we we really want to be doing that too and so you don't just you could just take the broad lens of what i said but you can look at biomimicry for very specific things right you can go all the way down to your relationship or a problem you're having in your life and look for where nature solved the problem and look for solutions because the earth is doing it right and we can model ourselves now we can also spend more time on the earth for sure bare feet on the earth hands on the earth gardening being in nature being in bodies of water all of that will support you depending on what your uh, climate is right now you're all over the world so I'm not going to presume right um if you're a weaver, you can be weaving inside or outside, but run a lot of earth energy right now. Your first fuel source, what's in your body, second fuel source right now, earth. Align to earth because it's going to help you shift the baseline naturally to the new baseline, which is going to be so much better for your systems, all of you. Like it won't feel so like if you're still on your old baseline of 2019, um, your energetic system is in a state of sheer, right? Old and new. Ah, that is not comfortable, right? And it's just putting extra strain that doesn't need to be there, okay? Okay, I just want to check that there's no major comments floating up here because I'm throwing so much at us in a short time. Okay, seems to be making sense. Okay, if you've got questions, ask for the old timers here. You know I'm going to spend heaps of time asking question, uh, answering questions if they're there. Okay, so that's the next thing that you want to do to work proactively. And the, the next one is about the role of faith. Okay, faith is easy to lean into and play in um, when things are going well. When things are not going well, faith can feel so far away, trust and faith, right? At the end of the day, faith is work. Faith is a choice right? And at its very, very foundational basis, nuance all over the top. But if I drill it right down, faith is, are you choosing to believe in love or fear? Okay. And you, you may have to ask hundreds of times a day, right? In dark moments, but it's a choice. It's just, how am I going to choose to walk the path that is in front of me? Okay. And so, where are you leaning in a little deeper to faith? Sometimes it's easy. That's not where the real growth and work is. It's where it's harder that we have to lean in. And, you know, I've had dark times too, right? And so faith is what allows us to get through and take a baby step and take a baby step. Because at the end of the day, what's the alternative? Right? For me, that's what, I, what it comes down to. I either choose to have faith in what I'm making the choice to put my trust and belief in, what feels right in every cell of my body. I'm gonna have faith in that, even if it feels like it's deserted me, abandoned me, I can't even connect to it. I'm choosing to have faith that it is there for me, or I'm choosing to be lost in fear. They're, they're kind of my choices for me personally, right? Um, how do I wanna show up as a person this life? right? So lean in deeper into faith, okay? And then next point, I'm skimming these fast, so if you need me to go deeper, you let me know, okay? Then the next one is, in Ascensional Surge, you may have noticed things are moving fast, right? And then at times, slow, fast, slow, fast, slow, <laughs> sometimes fast and slow at the same time. The concept of linear time for energy sensitive people 
is fallen over, right? You might go, oh my God, the year's moving so fast. Today, it just moves so slow. And now it's fast again and it's slow. Like we're all over the shop, okay? But overall, if we were to zoom out a bit, things are moving overall fast in our systems, which is why our poor psyche is hurtling, struggling to catch up a little bit. And so now more than ever, it is advantageous, let's just say, to respond to feathers, maybe bricks, not trucks. Okay, what the hell do I mean by that? Some of you know that analogy and so some of you are like, I have no idea what she's saying. Okay, when we are being invited into a change, and Ascension is definitely inviting us into change, um, we are being offered to make change, to shed old patterns, to shed old beliefs, to adopt new identities. All of those things are happening to bring in new skill set, to take that leap and move from what was old and familiar to step into something new, right? All of those things are in play. And we will be given signposts and nudges all along the way. Now, that's coming through our intuitive knowing. It may also be coming through synchronicity in our lives, but they are there. And we have a choice. At the beginning, they come as feathers, you know, little tickle, tickle, nudge, nudge, <laughs> right? And then if we continue to ignore that, they kind of come like a brick. Like, oh, oh God, I better pay attention to that. And then if we still keep ignoring that, they come as a truck. We all want a truck. Definitely, I want a trunk. Now, sometimes we have trucks. Those are the big healing crises, or we lose our house and have to move, or we uh, a loved one dies, or like big issues. Okay, loved one dies, not so much because that's out of our control, right? But like big shifts that feel huge to us. And I know some of you have experienced those, right? Or are in the process of experiencing those. Some of them just have to happen in ascensional surge go back to the the points we've already talked about today and focus there right but even from this point forwards there's always feathers present and really can you lean in not out right the tendency in ascensional surge um and sometimes we need to you know is to lean out ah go away i'm just gonna hide back here right um, the more we lean out and ignore the feathers, say, no, 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 I'm trying to hold to the status quo. This is how it should be. This is where I'm comfy, right? The more that we ignore them, the more we escalate it. We're not actually going to stop the healing or the shift or the change or the growth that needs to happen. We're not, right? <laughs> well, we may as well lean in and attempt to respond to the feathers, right? So what might that mean? Is there a tiny little niggle in your in your awareness somewhere that is a challenge you might want to lean into, a growth thing? So a couple years ago, I was like, yeah, I'm going to learn to become a good hiker. <laughs> if any of you know me, you'll know that's a pretty big change for me. I'm not really, a, but most of my friends know, even though I live in the middle of a World Heritage National Park, I'm not like a huge hiker. But I wanted to challenge myself. And so I started doing big hikes, backcountry hikes, which now I love, right? But that was a challenge for me. Could I even do it? I had these limiting beliefs. Oh, no, my body couldn't do that, right? Is there something little that you could lean into in the growth area? That'd be like a feather, right? And so much more will come from it than whatever their little act is, right? I cannot tell you the energetic shifts that happened to me in the backcountry or the incredible channel downloads of somatic magic out over the canyons. Like so much that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't said, yeah, I'm going to attempt to become a hiker, right? So trust the feathers are leading you somewhere magical because they are, right? If you've already hit a brick, right, or possibly even a truck, a truck, I would recommend extra support because sometimes that can feel like a, a, a really hard place to do it solo, right? But if you've hit a, a brick, then with love, with gentleness, with kindness to ourselves, but I want you to ask yourself, what's the opportunity here? Because we can get very focused on, ah, this is terrible. 
I want you to just allow your yourself to open up into possibility a little bit, right? Because it opens so many doors and it allows our energy to move and flow when we can open up a little bit. And the question, what is the opportunity here or what is an opportunity here? There's always an opportunity, right? Opens our system and allows energy flow, right? Which helps movement, back to movement again, right? And that will make a big difference, okay? Okay, and then there's two more that I'm going to talk about and then we're moving straight into process, okay? So then the next one is during ascensional surges, if we want to move proactively, then we want to lean into growth, right? Now, I know for many of us, life has at times in the last few years felt overwhelming, and the temptation for our psyche is to move into our comfort zones and hunker down as firmly as possible. I'm also guilty of this, right? I don't claim that, <laughs> like that I'm past that either. That is a natural state of our psyches wanting to keep us safe. And safety is very important, okay? Can't override your safety. It just, nothing works when you do that, right? So I understand the need for safety. But when we hunker down into our comfort zones really tightly, our world gets a little smaller. Our energy contracts a little more into a tighter field, tighter meshed web. This is all for protection and safety, right? And there's a time and a place for that. But it can become habit. And when it becomes habit, then we get stagnation of our energy that is not good okay stagnation in our energetic system allows for the pulling of blocks it it stops flow and movement think of a body of water flowing movement in water is healthy water stagnation not moving still water breeds algae and mosquitoes and like right we do not want stagnant energy Okay, now there's a lot of ways to prevent energy getting stagnant. Not to harp on, but weavers, <laughs> weave, weave. Just don't even worry about ritual, do foundational weave. Change your state, 10 minutes, change your state, get your flow back, have your energy moving through your body. Keep it simple, right? But we want back to movement and we want to think about those comfort zones. I'm not asking you to step a long way out of your comfort zone, but one thing that you can really do is look for growth or um, picking up something new. This is related to that challenge, but for transformational facilitators in particular, look for a new modality, right? Look for something to add to your toolkit. Craft focused mastery is actually at the moment key for creating those sustained flows of renewal energy that you need to serve right now okay that was a big sentence with a lot in it but it's really important okay craft focused mastery is our key to not feeling drained and exhausted to not being able to step out there and serve when people need us to be serving okay and the last one is one that you will be familiar with but I'm giving you a twist and it's we really want to manage our energetic systems so I should put my phone on silent um, and so what energy are you taking in okay now my gorgeous spongy empaths which there are many <laughs> right here in this group most of you are empaths that's not a new question what energy are you taking in you know all day every day what energy am i taking in right <clears throat> i want you to consider not just the energy you're avoiding right i know that energies have been huge on the planet so huge in the collective obviously there was some really intense energetic theme moving even on the planet though the energies are big if you're very sensitive to that it could have felt overwhelming and you needed to retreat find some safety that's okay so but empaths are now retreated so far many of us that we're almost no longer a part of the collective at all <laughs> just exited it right <laughs> and i get that i understand that too so but it's not just the energy you're avoiding are you looking for a way back in but they're healthy then what energies are you also looking to take in in an active sense 
okay? And we're going to extend on this across the two workshops. So you're going to get to experience this more tomorrow, right? But are you actually cultivating, bringing into your body energies that are supportive? And this can be done in any moment, right? Your cup of hot tea, the sun on your skin, right? Nature of any form, a hug. Are you just brushing them off or are you sucking them in? Suck them in, right? They make a massive difference in rewiring your nervous system and working on your energetic system. What's the resonances that you're able to hold in your body, right? So it's not just what you're avoiding, it's what you're actually stockpiling into your body. And when we weave, of course, we stockpile vast amount of energy, often with divinity involved and ascended masters, there's all sorts of stuff happening. But at the most simple level, weavers or non-weavers, it doesn't actually matter, are you collecting up the energies in your field, tiny moments in the day, stockpile them in they will make a massive difference, okay? And lastly, what energy are you cultivating out, right? When you are an empowered empath, a heal, healed empath, I don't really like that term, but when you're understanding that your empathy is a gift and not a deficit or a weakness in your system, when it's a gift, you are an incredible agent for change and transformation on the planet because you are a very powerful frequency holder as well. So what energies are you holding in your body as a resonance and cultivating out? And if you're not sure, we're going to do that right now. So you're going to get to feel it, okay? But those are some things energetically I want you to be considering. Okay, so I'm going to take a really quick pause here before we just move straight into process now. I did teach a little longer than I wanted. I should have known my bullet points were too big. I'm really trying to create short lives and not doing the best job at it. Okay, I'm glad that this is all making sense for everyone. I'm stopping here in case there's any questions. Take a moment now before I get you way out of your head and right into the somatics of the work to share something that was really interesting for you. We call it a goddess wink. Share, what am I taking out of this? A highlight or ask a question. This is a good time to do it if you want to do it. Again, on replay, same thing goes. Oh, yay, new art. Art is a really awesome one. Creativity. That's a great one to connect to, Lou. Awesome. Okay, <clears throat> I will come back to highlights <clears throat> goddess winks and questions right at the end should there be any just so that people can get off if they want to and so what I'm going to do now I'm going to aim to not keep it incredibly long because we're on Facebook but we are now going to do the practice of getting our power under our feet now some of this will feel new some of it will feel familiar um, go with it this may be something that you you go, I love this. And some of you may be like, I only got, I only felt it a tiny bit. Uh, it's accumulative either way in your body. The more you do it, the more it accumulates. Why? Because we're creating an energetic pathway, magical conduit, if you like, in our bodies. The more we repeat it, the more entrenched it comes in our system. Once that groove is a little deeper, exactly like a neural pathway, when we're creating new habit, we do this energetically. Once we've done it a few times and it gets deeper, the, the more we do it, the deeper the groove in our energetic system, the more it becomes the default slipstream. And the more it means it becomes our default go-to action, right? This is why somatics is some of the most powerful work on the planet to create lasting change, changing default states of being from the body, okay? Awesome. Well, there's no questions. Okay, okay, awesome. Awesome. Maybe there'll be questions on replay. <laughs> Let me know if anyone wants me to talk more about a specific topic because I covered those bullet points fast, right? Okay, so let us get in and do the process right now, okay? So we take a breath. We just start with a breath. Why am I asking you just to breathe and be present to the in-breath and the out-breath? Because it brings us present. <laughs> Feel the breath entering your body. Feel your body respond. 
On the exhale, again, feel the air leaving your body. Notice as we already bring our attention to our bodies, time slows a little bit. <clears throat> okay, one more breath in and allow that exhale to be longer on the exhale. I'm not going to take us deep into a deep meditative state or trance state or anything like that today, <coughs> but let your exhale be longer and feel yourself relaxing and dropping down. Drop down right down into your pelvis. And bring your awareness to your seat on your seat. Okay. Continue taking that breath. You might even breathe further down. Feel yourself almost like filling up right down in your pelvis. And allow the weight to settle into your body. And now we're going to check in with ourselves again and notice what we feel just in our body. Okay, we're going to keep this easy today, pretty light. We're not going to do any epically huge work because we're on a live together. I'd much rather be, you know, in an intimate Zoom space where I can coach you if we're going to do any deep healing. Okay, so we just notice what's in our bodies. Okay, notice first of all, the first thing that you notice in your body. And how would you describe it if you were going to give it a label? And just for a counterbalance, notice something that feels in contrast to that in your body. Notice that both of these things exist in your body simultaneously. Tomorrow's workshop, we're going to go way into holding complexity. But for now, I just want you to notice both of those things have truth in your body right now. It's not either or, yes and. Both of these are here and present. Okay, and so I want you, this is not a stillness process, right? I want you to tune back into the first thing that you noticed. And I want you to notice how your body wants to move in response to that. And there's two things I want you to consider. I either want you to consider moving into a stretch or I want you to consider moving into a contraction and softening release. So notice which way you want to go first, wherever you're noticing it in your body. How does your body want to move right now? Allow your body's wisdom to lead here. And when you've done one, I want you to move gently just to the edges of the gentle comfort range to the opposite. So if you stretched, soften and release. If you released and softened, stretch. Now pick another part in your body. Just allow your awareness to drift. What else are you noticing? Maybe it's your shoulder or your neck. How does your body want to move? Does your arm want to extend? Does your head want to tip? Right. Notice what it is. Move into a stretch and then a softening or a softening and then a stretch, whichever your body is calling you to. Now you're going to keep stretching and release, moving between the two, guided by your body. I'm going to keep guiding you to a new spot. You're going to keep doing that while you breathe. Just a relaxed breath in and out. If, you, if you're if you okay to multitask, you might want to do a 4-4 four, four breath or a 5-5 five, five breath. Just a nice, calm, connected, centered breathing. And continue to look for another spot in your body. Maybe it's your foot now. Does your leg want to stretch, soften? Do your toes want to point? Or your heel flex? Just notice the two directions. Move to another part of your body. Again, is it your side? Maybe there's a stretch. And maybe in the stretches and the releases, as you're noticing them, you're being automatically guided to the next part of the body. 
Okay. I'm asking you to turn the wisdom over to the body. Continue the stretch and release movement. Now at a really fundamental level as you're doing this, I'm helping guide you into what we call the join up with the body. I'm bringing you into body, we're hooking up, right? This is when you're in body is when you can work potently with energy. Not from here, from here. Okay, continue what needs to move in the body. Stretch and relax. Notice where you want to move. And now I want you to just notice if you want to move forwards or backwards as well. And notice what feels like the most potent posture for you. You may have noticed, oh, I'm always slightly shifted on my left weight. Do you want to move to your right? See what it feels like to do the opposite of normal. You always have your weight forward. Does it feel nice to put your weight back for a minute? And continue stretch and release moving into your edges of your range and then relaxing into them guided by wherever your body is moving you what are you noticing what is the awareness and breathe Now, if you want to keep doing this practice later on by yourself, do this as long as feels good, right? And there's so much we'll build on. We'll build on some of it tomorrow. And if you decide to come and weave, you obviously build way on it because this is just step 1A <laughs> of the weaving process, right? But notice where our hookup needs to be. Notice what needs to move. Notice what needs to complete in your body, right? I'm not going to go into trauma healing here, but trauma gets stuck in our body in an incomplete movement that we couldn't complete at the moment, right? And creates all sorts of havoc. Blocks are incomplete movement. What needs to move? Breathe, stretch, release. This should feel good. This should feel delicious, okay? That's what we're going for here. And we're allowing our body to guide us. Okay, take a last moment back into finding potent posture for you. Where is it? Ah, uh, yes, here. Here is the movement that feels right to me. Just notice where you want to be, coming to rest in that. And we are going to center ourselves, our energetics, our bodies, our spirits in our bodies, in our centers in four directions now, right? You may not have ever done centering in such depth, but this is really powerful. So the first place that we're gonna center in from here is we're gonna center in our length. So I want you to, first of all, feel your seat in your seat, feel your pelvis on whatever it is you're sitting on. Bring your awareness to your legs, maybe even your feet on the ground. Feel ground beneath you. And then lift up at the same time, like a string pulling from the crown chakra, lifting right up into your length and breathe into your length. And what automatically comes emotionally or quality wise when we lengthen is we center in our sense of dignity. Feel that, right? And just notice it. Dignity for ourselves, dignity in others, in the world. Notice as that invokes in your body as you lengthen and breathe. Great. Now when you're ready, I want you to center in our width. So take a breath and feel your rib cage expand. Allow yourself to unfurl and take up a little bit more room. Feel your shoulders metaphorically widen, right? About your hips widening. Take up a little bit more room. And as we widen and find center in our width, right? We invoke our connection to the world around us, right? 
not only it's our inner relationship with other people we feel oh yeah with the room around us and as we become a bit more sensitive to divinity hanging in the air around us we connect back to magical essence in our width we're no longer shrinking so we have our length we have our width take a moment in movement again to find our center in those two where is your center okay and now we add our third direction we add depth so I want you to bring your awareness to your back body the back of your head your shoulder blades all the way down your spine your butt the heels of your feet the backs of your thighs bring your awareness to your back body now we often ignore the back body <laughs> life it pulls us to the front body a lot and pulls us forward what does it feel like to bring your awareness to your back body and rest into that a little bit where's potent posture in your back body okay like oh what does it feel like back here <laughs> may feel your um, abs engage in that like oh yeah what feels good maybe you don't want to be right here anymore maybe you're like i don't want to be right back here either but maybe here, oh yeah, my back body is grounding, right? And as you breathe and you just witness the back body for a moment, you're also going to feel the quality of your lived experience, your life history, your ancestry, your lineage. Three billion years of evolution is all behind us, supporting, holding us up from our back body. Notice that. And when you're ready, breathing in and exhaling and moving through your center body where your core runs right through to your front body. Feel yourself expanding in depth. Whoa, all of that and all of this, right? And again, notice our potent posture in our length, in our width and in our depth. <clears throat> Notice where that is for you, breathing again. Noticing how you feel in your body. And our fourth direction that we're going to center into right now is something that we are a commitment for. Maybe our purpose, but it may just be a quality, right? Just notice what it is. What are you a commitment for? And I want you to notice where you feel it in your body. It's likely to be somewhere in your core between your neck and your pelvis. <laughs> Maybe it's in your abdomen, often in our third chakras or in our heart chakras, but don't limit yourself. Perhaps it's somewhere else, but those are two if you're not sure where to find it. What is it? What are you a commitment for? Breathe it into your body. And again, notice where you need to center. Can you center in what you're a commitment for? in this moment in this moment breathing it in and feeling it in our length in our width in our depth and in our purpose okay beautiful okay this is us really centered at the moment and so from the centered position take a moment to flow just gently back into moving being led by the body into the stretch and release but from our center right in this centered position just notice oh yeah how is my body feeling now what am i noticing what is the stretch and release where is center and noticing it all in the body just allow it to be intuitive don't get hung up on all my words if it's <laughs> tripping you out they're just suggestions. Okay, find potent posture, find center in all of that in your body. Bring your awareness to your feet, to the ground, to the earth, breathing in. And on the exhale, breathing down, roots into the earth. On the inhale, breathing earth up into your body. Now, you may not be familiar with what I'm doing. It's the start of an invoke, right? But I'm asking you to bring earth up into your body and notice what's the temperature of earth? 
what is the quality of earth and there are many so it will change every time you do this but for now what are you pulling up into your body and on the exhale breathing down the roots saying hello feeling reciprocity between you and earth Now in our purpose, we invoked a quality, we invoked an energy I want you to be taking in and cultivating. Presumably you want to take in and cultivate because you're a commitment to it. Feel it in your body here in centered position and feel connection to earth, breathing in. Really breathe up the energy and resonance of earth to help reset baseline. Feel your roots going down again. Notice you are in center in every direction, all directions, move in any direction and notice center, coming back to it, ground solidly with the earth holding you. This is our power under our feet again. And so the last thing I'm going to invite you to do is, and only to the level that feels safe and comfortable, so it may be tiny for you and it may be as large as you want, right? On your in-breath, breathe in earth energy. On the exhale, expand your light body out a little bit more. Just do what feels safe, a little bit more. Notice more space as you do that. Take a little shake. Take a moment to shake and just allow density like sand to fall through the bottom of that space we just created. Feel a little bit more space. We're just resetting our energetic field a little bit. And here you are, centered, power under your feet, grounded to earth resonance with the baseline and expanded a little bit with a little bit of the density gone, right? Breathe. Notice how you feel in your body from this position. Awesome. You may want to do this over and over and over again, right? This is power back under our feet. Combine this with any of the points that I taught about in today's lesson, and you will be managing ascension more and more proactively with your power back under your feet. Okay, beautiful people, that is it. It's longer than I wanted, but it was okay. <laughs> Still, it was my, my normal workshop lengths, I guess, given my history. I thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, to be here, to experience this, to support your own ascension like this. I am committed to helping you in whatever way I can. Do we have another workshop tomorrow? It will be building on today's. So we'll take today's, we'll add more skill set to it. Thank you for all the hearts, everyone. It's awesome. <laughs> Tell me how you're feeling now. Tell me what you noticed. Tell me what shifted for you. I really like to hear, right? Let me know your goddess winks from today and how you feel after the process. Was that helpful? Woohoo! Awesome. Feels wonderful. Great. Awesome. Yay. <laughs> okay, we're going to build on it tomorrow. And of course, what I did for you today was, as I said, step 1a of when we move into the weave i'm going to give you some more skill set tomorrow to build on but if you really want to take this next level then i would love to welcome you into weaving right into let me initiate you as a full energy weaver and then we can take this so much further right because then you've got weaving energy under your belt which is a completely different relationship to energy we start a new circle next week for the first time I'm publicly opening up these circles again. I think it's been nearly two years since I've done this. So in this, so I'm super excited to welcome you in. If you've been waiting, if you've been wondering, now is the most perfect time to do this. Okay. If you want any details, information, I'm going to, um, I don't know, I'm somehow going to bump the video that talks all about weaving and also just PM me right and I will just send you the details for the next circle right let's not make this complicated okay I feel a bit tense in my body still because my mind wandered but the movement released a lot and I feel much lighter so thank you yeah absolutely and so this was a baby step you had to listen to my voice so the mind had to be engaged right and it's just a first step so do it more and more and it will become more natural and flowing to you you can hand over to the body more and more and more and more body more and more movement more and more light okay um 
And obviously when we weave, all of that takes it up several notches, okay? But just keep doing what we did without own it, right? Anytime I do somatic practice with you, you're going to need me to guide you that first one, maybe two times. And then after that, own it, do it the way you want to do it and allow yourself to always be led by the wisdom of your body because it knows, it knows what to do. <laughs> okay, my loves. So thank you so much for being here. I'm going to go now. Um, I'm going to check in later for any questions, but until then or until tomorrow, much love. Bye-bye.